Hey guys, it's Mia here, and welcome back once again. Um, today I have for you the Stanley Parable. Now I know I'm a little late to the boom in this game, but in my defense, I started YouTube after the popularity of this game died down, and I wanted to try it because I thought it'd be fun. I've never actually played this game myself. I have seen it played, and I know there's various different ways to play it. So let's get right on into it, shall we? It never ends, and the end is never the end, the ne never the end. Okay. That's a little ominous. Is it gonna load? You're, you're not going very fast over here. Did the game freeze? Uh oh. Hello. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. Play some elevator music up in here. That'll really wake everybody up. <laughs> oh, it's like. 8.30 in the morning right now? It might- Well, I know it's not gonna be when you guys watch it because I upload at noon, so... Click to this skip. is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on the keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although Sounds exciting. might have considered it so winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. I don't think I would be. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Uh, how do I move? Oh, this is WASMDM. Can I turn? So, hmm. You know, the narrator in this game reminds me of the narrator that you hear in the every Christmas book story before the movie actually starts. That's what he sounds like to me, and that's what he reminds me of. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No, I want to no see what's on here. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Where's my mouse? I'm clicking the key. Where's my mouse? I had my mouse on. Mouse sensitivity. See, you can see it now. Why can't you see it when I unpause it? Can I turn this down a little bit? See, you still can't see my mouse. Oh, okay. Got it. Why did I do that? 
Is there any other ones on? There's not even a there's not even a computer over here. Well, 432 got the short straw, didn't it? Stanley went around touching oh, every little up. thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. How Nor do you know? Did it advance the story in any way? Okay, Mr. Storybook Man. Isn't there a window? Can I jump out this window? Do I want to jump out the window? Whoops, just run into the wall. Ooh, another computer on. Looked like a Word document of some kind. What, you got nothing to say about me shutting off the computer? Huh? 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 Nothing to say? I don't think so. Can I close this? Nope. Well, that doesn't look good. Either somebody had an accident. Why is everything, like, everywhere? This isn't a very neat office. It looked like everybody just... Wait a minute. There's a computer on in there. I went in there. Let me in there. That door is open. Can I get over here? Whoa, what the heck? There's not even a way to get over there. I will get over there to shut that computer off. Well, that's pretty. <laughs> Let me... Let me in. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. On his left. Should I be that one? Should I go with the narrator or should I disobey the narrator is the question. Hmm. Well, I haven't really been following what he said so far. Like, I'm just going around clicking every little thing. So, sorry narrator, not today. You're being awfully snooty just because I'm looking at stuff. I can fit this through the door. This was the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps yeah. he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Oh, shish. Nobody asked you, Mr. Storybook Man. Does the narrator have a name? One of these doors has got to lead to that computer room that I saw. See? And why did that one desk not have a computer? Like, did he just script, say, forget it, and take the ah, computer with him? Yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth I want a the detour drink. after all, just to spend a few work? moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Oh, she Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. I'm not standing. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Why you gotta micromanage? Leave me alone. Mm. Oh, is this a... No, it's not. Do not lie if you are lying right now. Stop. How would you know if I'm lying or not? Why does it say caution? Do not lie. Is something gonna like... Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Excuse you, I was talking. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Ew, I wanna drive the forklift. Let me in, let me in, let me in. Is there a way to get in here? I <laughs> Watch, there's an alternate ending where you could actually drive the forklift. That would be awesome. These remind me of the. Look, Stanley, um, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really. I'm not. Never said I you were. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but in his eagerness to prove Ow. that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Yeah, we Good just job, saw Stanley. that. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. Say so, uh, what? I was just seeing if I could even type stuff on my computer. St 
deputies. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What? What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome hey, fell under out. his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. Let me go. Oh. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing no, let me out. Me. In here, I can be happy forever. Let me out, you bastard. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. You shut the Eventually, door on my face. <laughs> they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Oh, shut up. You now, locked me in here. Let me help. a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. I'm going to smack you, sir. <laughs> Narrator, I don't think I like you very much. You locked me in here. What was I supposed to do? <laughs> Has anyone ever tried to find the doors and like hit them in order? By their number? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stan had decided Ooh, to go on. to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Copy machine. Seriously, why does this computer not have a desk? Er, this- Wow. This com- This desk cannot have a computer. Every other desk in this office has a computer but that one. It's like you said, forget this, I quit, I'm taking it with me. He or she. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. You know what, let me be. Your Stanley is not in control anymore. I am. Oh, ooh, hey. Awaiting input. Oh! I don't know. I don't even know how I got up here. I just wanted to shut the- Stop it! I just wanted to shut the computer off. Stop it! I wish I could see my cursor so I know where I'm clicking. Oh! oh got it. Doink. He just gets up on his desk, starts having a dance party, like do 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 do. Can I do it again? No. Input receive. It seems like everybody let. Wait, is this the way I came from? No, because there's the doors. Hey, narrator, you're being awful quiet up there. Nothing to say, huh? Huh? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, I know he entered the, the door on his left. What, no congratulations for being right? Make up your mind. I do what you want and you say nothing, and then I don't do what you want and you yell at me the whole time. Good job, do we know? Nope. <laughs> do not alter without consulting the whiteboard manager. What? You need a white one. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. I wanted to read this, thank you. You know, me and you aren't going to get along very well. The meeting schedule, meeting, Mark Mondays, weekly target admin. What the heck was that? Oh. Wait. What? Narrator, what are you doing? And if no one is here, how are the slides changing? Narrator? Hey! Uh, are you changing the slides? And how did that door get shut? What are you doing? Okay. 
R.I.P. Franz. I hope that means he got fired and he didn't die. Floor 4XX. I almost thought that said combat planning. <laughs> do, 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 do. What does this one say? I couldn't move for a second. Targets, push for funding, R&D, now new coffee machine. Standardized graphics, 40 wide. Get Chris out of the broom. What? Get Chris out of the bloom closet. Not cost efficient. Sunrise papers. Hire someone to do sunrise papers. Papers are too synchronized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper guy. What? Who moved my desk? I don't know. Stanley just stood there doing nothing at all. He seems to think I have nothing better to do with my time than to sit around and describe every fascinating little detail of his inability to do anything. This I is why Stanley and something. I are on such good terms. Ah, uh, shut up. Please keep target topics off the... I come to curious to see what was written there originally. The future was yesterday, tomorrow is now. Uh, that's not how it works. It's tomorrow is now. The past was yesterday. Tomorrow. Complete today's unfinished agenda ideas. Right next day's agenda. Okay. What was this meeting about? Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievable, amazing work, and all the time every day. No exceptions of promotion or recognition. Don't get fired. Well, ain't that the tip to live by? How to solve a disparate coworker? Let it ball up inside. Take out possible aggressive on other coworkers. Resent co coworkers for not supporting you more. Using slides to ensure that employees are over K. Make sure your slide has slick graphics. A header. Everyone is unique. You most of all. Somehow, I highly doubt that. Ooh, there's another whiteboard. To do synchronize core values, expenditures, shift global market pattern, monetize free to play. What? Help! I'm a post it! <laughs> That'd probably be me, like. Does this actually say something, or is it just random type on the keyboard? Okay, moving on. Hey, here's the broom closet. Oh, ah. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Wait, what happened to the guy that was in here? There was somebody stuck in here. Or was that me? There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. You're a little late on the draw there, narrator. Whoa. This is a heck of an office here. I need to go to the bathroom real quick. Hold on, narrator. You're gonna follow me here? Can I open you? It's locked. But I needed to go to the bathroom. This is an insane office. That's it. Is this one on? No, it's not on. It's over here. It's locked. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. What dark secret was being held from him? What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And oh, so the boss had right assigned it an extra secret pin number. You two, wanna tell me? Eight, four, five. But of course, Stanley couldn't post yet incredibly by simply pushing random buttons on the keypad. You Stanley told me, retired to the correct code by sheer luck. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Oh, uh, what passageway? 
my passageway. Oh, the big, big open door over here. Okay, there's some logic that doesn't add up here. This thing up here is not near as big as this door. Unless it expands and closes. See, I'm gonna go back this way. I'm not gonna crash this elevator like I did in Inside, am I? <laughs> Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Because Stanley's no longer in control. You know, those kind of elevators that are open like that kind of freak me out. Like, why would you want to see the inner workings of the elevator? Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Somehow I doubt that's really the escape. <laughs> doink, doink, doink. Why the doink? The lights rose oh. on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. I don't Did know, maybe we're being mind controlled. To find out. Mini. Mini. No. Nope. Oh, that's a long drop. Boom. Are these supposed to be computers? Huh. Employee observ observation protocol. Hey narrator, you wanna get help me out here? Oh, maybe the big A button that now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. Lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. Wait, I forgot what number I was, but I just noticed that one of them said fired. That might have been the desk that was empty. Wait, well, didn't have a computer. Fired. What one am I? That's a lot of screens. There can't be that many employees in here. Number 493 has a good office down here at the bottom. Okay. 
Hey, let me out. Let me out. I wanna go out. Let me out. I don't wanna be here. Oh, the screens are on now. Narrator, where'd you go? Hello? Big mm, storybook voice in the sky. What happens if I shut the cameras off? Oh, wait. I can go this way. What are you doing? This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Yes. No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept oh, it. We're going His higher. own life in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? Apparently so. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he <laughs> would dismantle the controls once and for all. How do I do that exactly? You know, these doors are very conveniently labeled. So see, if we're being controlled... If we're being controlled, like, where did everybody go? And in that case, why was I the last person to wake and up? at last he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty, his obligation, to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. Okay, narrator. Be straight with me. You're the big voice in the sky. So, are you the one doing this? Or are you the one that woke everybody up? Hmm? Hmm? What you gotta say to that? Uh, what happened? Blackness and a rising chill of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. Was it over? He had won. He had defeated the machine. Unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? Exactly, how that's why I was wondering. Freed from the machine's grasp. What other mysteries did this strange building hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And 
that was all he needed to know. It was perhaps the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Give me one second, narrator. Why are we by a farm? Because this is all pretty, and then you look, then you look over by there, and there's probably a big, big old factory. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin, the feeling of liberation, the immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way. Right I'm not now, moving. That things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Yay! I think. <laughs> that all seemed manufactured to make you think you got away. Because <clears throat> I don't think you really did. It was all just another trick. Probably a test. Because I don't think that's what the outside of a factory would really look like. I think it was just another test to see if you do what you were told. Testing the limits of their mind control devices. I was just a guinea pig. And the others who left failed. That's what I think. I think that was all just another mind control test to see how far they could take us. And if we'd rebel or not. That's why I was truly the only one in the office, because I'm more like a mat. a rat in a maze than a person. And this whole office is the maze. They wanted to see A, if I would do what I was told. Or B, if I would rebel and they'd have to start me all over again. That's what I think. That's why no one else is truly here. They done already passed their test and proven that they were beyond mind control, like severely beyond it, and got fired or probably killed off. And then B, if they would go ahead like me and follow directions. And those who did were considered the most susceptible to mind control for whatever the heck this company is actually trying to pull. And I think in doing what the narrator wanted, we played right into that rat in a maze category. And think of it this way, because the narrator gets super angry when you don't do what you're told. But we never see the narrator. Not one time do we see him. I think he is a scientist in some observation high above the maze that we don't see because it's designed to look like an office. He is the scientist telling us, the rat, what to do. That's why he wanted us to have the code. That's why he gets angry when we don't do what he wants to do, because that means we're another failed attempt at his experiment. Crazy? Out there? I don't know. But that's what it seems like to me. A rat in a maze being told what to do and where to go. And in doing what we're doing, doing following the narrator's direction, we are not truly escaping, but we are following the test, the maze. That's just my take on it. We are rats in a maze and nothing more. Alright, well, with that, I will see if I can get the other ending. Maybe I'll truly disobey the narrator next time. So, as always, if you guys enjoyed, be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and ring that bell down below to stay up to date on future videos. Hope to see you next time. Bye, guys!